Before continuing on, make sure you reset your gambits on your thief, because thievery is no longer needed. In addition, because of flash causing blindness, I decided to move Isuna up to the top so I can more quickly get rid of it. The others, however, don't need any adjustments just yet. Yet? I'll be covering that in a little bit. For now, just so you know, I decided to put on the flame staff so I can raise magic power because healing in a sense is based on the square of magic power. Because magic power is multiplied by itself in this formula. It's not exactly that, but it is a general idea. A generalization, if you will. The next item on the list is the black mask, which is quite a ways away. Thieving this thing is not a necessity, however. Tiny bit of damage, but that's not what my focus is. Try to ignore the enemies along the way if you possibly can. Although sometimes it's kind of hard to avoid them, because they're right in the way, like this thing's getting in my path. Not there, because you're not after the crown of laurels, but what you're after is this spot right in here where these banshees are. But there's two catches present. Two? Oh no. The first one is, there's a surprise foo bar over here. You cannot get too close to the wall. At this point, however, it doesn't matter because of the second catch. There's junk enemies along the way that you need to deal with, in the fact of using magic in the Delaying that thing's actions. The catch, just so you know, and of course that had to expire. Remember these things, right? It's been a while since you last saw them. Pop on the defender so that we can do some more reasonable damage. And they love using fangs, which is really annoying. Well, you're really left behind. There's two more presents. It's their vanish spell that they have in effect initially. That makes them really annoying. Those out of the way, continue on to get two zones away. And when you're two zones away, simply backtrack. And this is where some other changes occur. First, get the flame staff back on if you had it, or whatever your strongest staff is. And raise magic power as far as you can get it. Don't have any accessories that raises magic power, so I guess that's good as as good as it's going to get. But note the difference in healing. Just pushing 8,000. Yep, that's that square taking its effect. Although yes, you do sacrifice defense. It's not that important at this point. This zone takes a while to load. Tick, tick, tick. The clock is ticking. Bad timing, Libra. At least they didn't carry all the way through. Notice how I'm able to one-shot them? It's okay at the moment if you end up uh, getting that food bar because you need to get rid of the respawns in here. In other words, you have to wait about another five or so extra minutes, maybe up to ten to the maximum. Ten when you start, basically. That one's out of my range. That bug's still trying to kick in. Double bubble. Not to be confused with the gum. Eh, 
and there's a respawn. Hop on the defender as soon as you're aware of it. There's probably more present. What do you know? That appeared out of absolutely nowhere. When you're done with the respawns, getting through that area where they're present, pop on the flame staff again and reheal as needed. It's only your party leader that really needs to be healed, however. Any moment now, the chain should be leveling up. And speaking of which, it does. At this point, reduce your party to one. You might have to wait for your other casters to do their things when Gambit's doing their things. And at this point, I would strongly suggest turning off all attack Gambits. It seems strange. But yes, because you do not want to be a bothering with Foobar that appears. You can easily take those out in one hit for the most part. There is a slight chance, however, that you won't. But it's close enough. Continue on until you get Black Masks. This one did not get defeated. What do you know? Just suit her on in the usual way. Be careful when approaching that wall, however, because if you see Fubar, you'll either need to sacrifice the loot or just deal with it, healing on the way back, of course. Black masks. Now well, that's a rare sight. What about the license? Well, that license is actually right here. Pretty obvious in a way. Kind of hard to miss. Annoying animation causing problems. Yes, these two have really caught up, all well, thanks to that 999 chain that I ended up getting. And just so you know what the effects are, not as significant, but it's the absorption of dark that really makes it more worthy. Really widespread. And you're in a really bad spot. Which means I need to deal with this thing. It is vulnerable to blind, however. And just pretty much ignore it from here. It's trying to, it's so trying to, but it just can't get there. It's a junk enemy, you don't have to bother with it. Of course, anytime you end up taking damage, just fully heal. And one thing to note is that faith is essential for this process. At about the halfway point for resetting the enemies, that's a good spot to recast faith. Even though it's already active, it'll still work because it resets the timer. If you see a miss, then that means it didn't work. Nicely spaced. Very close. And that's my last black mask. In that case, reset your party to what you originally had, and re-enable your attack gambits on the one that you disabled them on, and go off and save.
Before going after the AK, a few minor equipment adjustments are needed, and one thing I do recommend is going after a long range weapon, so that way, well, there's a reason for that. And raise your defense, although equipping a Minerva Buster means missing HP, just easily fixed through the use of a save crystal. Where's the AK? You are pretty much just there. It is wise, after all, to save your game after every piece of equipment is dealt with. Just ignore these junk enemies along the way as much as you can. Hmm. Okay, it's pointing in the wrong direction. Good. Well, this area looks familiar. It's pretty much about right where you need to be. And surprise Blue Bar. Yeah, let the others do the work. And see her on. The Yake is dropped from these. However, you can actually give them a boot. Oh, they're really good and good that time. One vanished somewhere. Boot. Area of effect gets the other one. By immobilizing them, you can prevent them from evading. You need to pass through this zone, which has some plenty of junk animals along the way. You can just give these boots. You probably remember these. You haven't dealt with them in quite a while. Notice the difference in accuracy there? Yep, perfect accuracy pretty much. This one can also be a troublemaker. This is the zone you need to get into to get two zones away, or at least it's a quick access route anyway. Not too much junk enemies to deal with. And yes, because you got junk enemies along the way, you need to wait for the respawns to stop. That's a vantage point that has gotten an area of effect. It's only way of targeting them. Just give them boots. I'm gonna get this far one over here. There's two of them I can get in one. With boots. Okay, there we go. Where's the license at for that? That license, if you've gone after the Defender, you should already have it. And just so you know what the benefits are, it's not too decent. 
But it is a pretty nice katana, at least. However. the 60 IK. In that case, off to the save crystal. Of course you don't have to get 6. 3 is actually more recommended than 6, but get as many as you want. 6 at the most. For the 7th and final item in the Nabrius Deadlines, you must have absolute control over which enemies you target. This means you cannot have a Berserker, and you must disable all attack gambits except for one exception. What is that? Well, to target a specific enemy, you have to have a very specific condition, and something that is unusual, and preferably something that, a, that the target enemy is vulnerable to. In this case, silence works very well. So change all attack gambits so that they are basically full status equals silence. Do so on your Berserker as well, or would-be Berserker. This I can probably turn off. Now I just need to wait for Berserk to expire. The item you're after is called the Power Rod, and it drops from this enemy right here. But there's a catch. The catch is... Well, first I'll demonstrate this. Notice how he's already going after it? No problem there, right? The catch is this. Notice how Bosch is not going after it, but the Berserker is? You cannot have a Berserker as a consequence. That's the only reason behind that. So, silence this thing, for which it is vulnerable to. Suitor run is needed. Hey, Berserk expired. Great. All I need to do now is get two zones away and repeat. There is an alternative to doing this, however. What is that? You first need to get the Zodiac Spear, and from there, you can solo these things. That's right, solo them. It gets rid of a lot of other problems, too, such as Leomond Antite sneaking up on you. Of course, you can't silence that, so... There's ways around other junk enemies, too. What do you suppose Immobilize is useful for? Yep, give it a boot! Silence your target the enemy, and give boots to everything else. However, there is a junk enemy mixed in with all this, and that's this thing. All we need to do for that is just give it a boot. Just be careful which enemy you target, of course. And as usual, ignore the loot until team level 4. Anytime you see Liam on Dentite, either get away or just ignore it. You can always give it a boot too, you know.
any moment now the chain should be leveling up. I'm gonna go grab the other one while I'm at it. There you go, go after it. And this thing needs a boot. And a chain. Uh oh. Look what decided to join in on this. You can give it a boot if you need to. One way to get away from it. William on Dentite is a really big nuisance in this particular zone. And this is actually the best area where you can get the power rod. It's a 3% drop, which means it's out now at 12% for the chance of it being dropped. Essentially 1 in 8 as I like calling it. However, one thing to note is you can actually get up to four of these in one. Silence guy. I'm gonna let get both of them. And again, I'm gonna specifically target one. Uh, okay, why did it turn red like that? Anytime you attack one of their own kind, that's what's gonna happen. Get rid of this banshee by giving it the loot. Yeah, you're trying to do it, but you just can't do it. You're out of range and you got a boot. Where's that license at? Well, from this familiar one. One, two, one, two. Right there. The item, however, isn't too worthy, but it does have some benefits, at least. It's better than the rod. And it does add 15 extra MP, but you have to remember, that 15 gets multiplied by 3 because 3 missed charges. Yep, 864 instead of the current 819, in a sense. And this one can really make use out of it. 930. Save. 